Good morning. We are streaming this service today because 10 o'clock is in the parish hall for Interactive Church. So thank you for being here, you brave intrepid souls, at this early hour for our live stream. And welcome to those joining us online. I'm Ann Fraley, the rector of St. Peter's Episcopal Church in South Windsor, Connecticut. Our liturgy begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you don't notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppose all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. 
If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the spreading of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Let's say Psalm 112 together. Alleluia. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. The descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. In the darkness for the upright, the righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. But they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The die of the wicked will perish. A second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest, not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet, among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them, 
and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of God so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Is the volume okay on this? Yep. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may find my way in the darkness. And he said, put your hand in the hand of God, for that is better than light and safer than a known way. These words were written by a school teacher in England, Minnie Louise Haskins, and recited in a Christmas broadcast by King George VI. Somewhere, I want to say 1936 was the year, but I forgot to look it up, so I can't tell you precisely. I can tell you that he recited those words in his broadcast. I heard them long ago, and they kind of fell on me like rain on parched earth. It's a very favorite, which you might imagine to be true since I was able to recite it by heart. Put your hand in the hand of God, for that is better than light and safer than a known way. Those are the words in particular that I want you to think about today. I hear, put your hand in the hand of God, and I imagine myself as a child reaching up to take a parent's hand or an adult's hand for a sense of safety and security. Whether it's walking over uneven ground or crossing the street or simply being in an unfamiliar place, that sense of connection, of trust, 
helps me move forward in a time of anxiety. So imagine for you, what is it like to put your hand in the hand of God? Now we often don't seek to anthropomorphize God. We get into a lot of trouble when we do that because that tends to limit God and our sense of who God is. But it nonetheless conveys a certain sense of relationship to describe that action. So what is it like for you to put your hand in the hand of God? And now imagine in this next phrase, for um, it is safer than a known way. Safer than a known way. If you think about a light, and the person who's speaking in this particular poem is asking for a light that they may find their way in the darkness, chances are they know the way in daylight. It's not an unfamiliar path, but at night the light will guide them and at least spare them any stumbling or any surprises, one would hope. But here the invitation is to put your hand in the hand of God because it is, because it is better than light and safer than a known way. When I hear those words, I think, okay, God's taking me somewhere other than the path I know. But I can rely on my safety being held in God's hand and I can trust that God will lead me in a safe way. I chose those words carefully because sometimes when God leads us down a path that is unfamiliar, it can be full of trepidation. Think of such a time in your own life when you may have felt called by God to go try something different, something new venture onto a new path. And because it is new, it is unknown to you. It may not be unknown to others. It may be a familiar path from point A to point B that others take, but that you don't take. So you may be aware of the pathway, but it is new to you. Do you nonetheless feel some sense of anxiety about what you will encounter? about what you will find out about yourself, about others? Do you imagine failure to be a piece of the possible equation? Do you imagine that in every new thing you try, you will succeed on the first go? Is this a journey of great length? Or is it a short trip? However we measure those journeys that we set out upon with God and our hand in the hand of God, we can trust nonetheless that God has our best interests at heart. And this is why it is safer than a known way. Because even if that terrain is tricky, even if it is metaphorically rocky, even if the way may seem, again, metaphorically steep, the outcome of that journey will benefit us and enrich us and deepen our spirit, our life, our wholeness in a way that we cannot imagine when we set out. And this is why putting our hand in the hand of God is better than light and safer than a known way. When you consider the known pathways, for instance, they become rote. We cease to see or identify or recognize the things that are around us as we travel on that path. We think we know the way. In fact, if I were to ask you to close your eyes and describe your route home from here to, to home, what things would you leave out in that description? Because you're so used to seeing them. The known way has perils of its own because we cease to be alert. We cease to be curious. We cease to be excited about the way when it is too familiar. And so, again, 
When we put our hand into the hand of God, it is better than light and safer than a known way because it keeps us open to possibility, to awareness, to curiosity and discovery, and along the way to transformation and when needed, redemption. Put your hand in the hand of God. It is better than light and safer than a known way. Now we can argue about the safety part of that. I get that there might be some questions, some pushback about how someplace unknown is going to be necessarily safe. And when you consider and look back on your own journeys, when you were trying something new, you may have felt anything but safe. But the challenge is when we set off on a new path, when we take on a new adventure, if we neglect God as our companion in that process, then yes, safety might be up for grabs. But again, when we put our hand in the hand of God, that is light and more than light because we are guided by all that is divine and to enrich and nourish, improve and benefit us. And not just us, but the world in which we live and move, the people with whom we live and interact, the communities of which we are a part. When we find our way taken in the hand of God, the rest of the world will change for the better as well. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may find my way in the darkness. It's still a valid request. And yet, when we put our hand in the hand of God, we do in fact find it better than light and safer than any known way. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in reciting the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, form one, found on page 383 in the prayer book. We 
With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For Michael, Jeffrey, and Laura, our bishops, for Nigerian bishops John and Marcus, for Anne, our rector, for Jesse, our deacon, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this town of South Windsor, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the Van Neel family, Ginger Marsh, Rose, the Perrin and Lewis families, the Southern Sutherland family, Lauren, the Best family, the Abbott family, Roger, Marilyn, Ann S., Karen Halsell, Clay, Norma Smith, Mark Moran, Renee, Amber Birkin, Kirk, Devin Walters, Rose Marie, Lee, and Malachi Roach, and family, and those committed to our ongoing prayers. For our armed forces serving at home and abroad and their families, especially Michael Friel and Richard Nunez Jr., who are deployed. Kenneth Fraley Jr., Jason Dorval, and Ryan Waite, and the victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, including the people of Ukraine, Puerto Rico, Florida, Eastern Kentucky, and California. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through mission, especially Episcopal Relief and Development, let us pray to the Lord. For the raising up of the leadership at St. Peter's for faith formation for our youth. For members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad and for their families especially Kenneth Fraley Jr., Jason Duval, and Ryan Waite, as well as Michael Friel and Richard Nunez Jr., who are deployed. And the many victims of the natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, including the people of Ukraine, residents of Puerto Rico and Florida, impacted by hurricanes, and eastern Kentucky recovering from damaging flooding. For groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially Boy Scout Troop 62, let us pray to the Lord. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for all of our blessings, for the ministry of the Parish Life Commission, for parish members of uh, the Frank family, the gobetz Hoff family, and Audrey Gall, and Crystal Bradway, Andrew Barber, Rand Chapman and Va <coughs> excuse me, and Valerie Morelli, who are celebrating birthdays this week. For these blessings and remembrances, let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the repose of the soul of Betty Van Neel, in all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of St. Peter and of all the saints, let us command ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, Lord our God. 
Almighty God, you made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Using the form of confession found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace that feels safe to you. At this time, John is going to bring up the care bags that were assembled last week after church to be blessed. This isn't all of them. We saved some to be blessed at 10 o'clock. Let us pray. Almighty God, you give us the gift of abundance of heart and mind and soul. You give us the grace to be generous with all that we do in considering the needs of others. We ask that you bless these items to be distributed on those who have no place to call home or to lay their head. That these items may in some small way reflect your hands at work in the world through our hands inspired by your love. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and for his sake. Amen. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
continue with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer. Where are we, A or B? B, 367, page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Peter and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Using the prayer of thanksgiving found on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's do announcements first. There's a bunch, a bunch. Who thought winter was slow? This Wednesday, Women, that's almost everybody in this room. We're having a ladies' night. Wednesday starting at 6, bring appetizer or dessert. We're going to have some fun, some conversation. We hope to have some sort of craft or one or two that we might make and just sort of have fun doing that together. Um, if you have not yet signed up, it's not too late. If you prefer not to drive at night, one of us who doesn't mind driving at night will come get you and we'll get you home. So please consider being part of that if you have not already this Wednesday. Coming up, man, it's just around the corner, Lent, hard to believe, Shrove Tuesday, which falls on a Tuesday of all things, the 21st of February, I do believe, we will be having the traditional pancake feast. Focus on feast. Y'all know about Shrove Tuesday, right? Why we do that? Yeah, okay. So feast big time. Again, sign up. There are links through the RSVP link that you use to sign up for Sunday worship 
to uh, sign up for that as well as Ladies' Night. And then if you feel so inclined, there will be a book study during Lent that will take place following coffee hour. So from basically 11.30 to one o'clock, it's a bring your own lunch and we will feast on the word and feast on food, simple food, it's Lent, and um, enjoy some time together just sort of breaking open um, a familiar parable, the prodigal son. Uh, this is a, a book written by Henry Nouwen, who is a renowned Roman Catholic priest, the late Henry Nouwen. He encountered the painting, The Return of the Prodigal Son by Rembrandt, and it kind of stopped him in his tracks and it caused him to sort of revisit that parable. So this book is about Nouwen's encounter with the painting and his then subsequent re-encounter with scripture and sort of a conversation between the two within his own being. I think it will be kind of interesting to uh, consider the many facets of that parable. So that's, uh, and you need to order your own book. We're not, we're, we're not going to uh, do that for you. People seem to have their own preferences for how they like to read. So whether it's Kindle, audio, or hard copy. So get your own book. And then let's see what else. Looking ahead to March. Um, on the 11th, which is a Saturday at three in the afternoon, we're having a kind of game night, family night um, afternoon for everybody. Kids, older folks, in between folks, whatever, however you want to describe yourself. Just a time to have some fun. It will be board games, it will be cornhole toss, we're gonna make our own little mini pizzas, so everybody gets what they want, and um, should be fun, again. And we're stealing the phrase Lent Madness from the basketball um, thing, but also Lent Madness, March Madness is the basketball. Lent Madness is a um, bracketed voting opportunity to rank the saints of the church and see who at the end gets the golden halo. It's a thing that started some time ago um, with some Anglican clergy and it's really kind of taken off. So we're stealing Lent Madness uh, from that. And if you want to know more about Lent Madness, the other Lent Madness, go, you know, Google it, go find out. It's kind of fun. You learn a lot about the saints. They pair two up every day. And so you, you vote on the two. You'd think every year the same one would win, but they don't. Okay, and then um, again, in a couple weeks on Thursday, February 16th, I know you all can read, but this is also for folks at home who are tuning in who don't have the benefit of a bulletin. Um, Dorley Ober is, will be hosting a Bible study at her home on Thursday afternoon at 1.30. Call the church for her address if that interests you. I don't know what's happening about signing up. I guess it's just show up. Call or email Dora Lee so she knows to expect you. Okay, information is in the bulletin. And again, if you aren't able to, to look at a bulletin, give Diana a call in the office, 860-644-8548, and uh, she'll help you out. And then finally, and this really doesn't apply so much to this group because we don't sing at 8 o'clock, but sometimes some of you do come at 10 where we do sing and we sing songs out of our songbook, which is a collection of favorites over the years, um, we're discovering that what I think might be familiar tunes to you aren't necessarily familiar tunes to you. So we'd like to know your favorites. And that way we schedule the, the tunes that you do know and love to be sung at worship. So there's a, si uh, not sign up, but a sheet on the, uh, a list on the bulletin board in the short hall for you to name your favorites. And, um, we were gonna try and keep a, a copy of the songbook, but there's no good place to put it. So feel free to take one with you or make notes and then transcribe or you know, dictate something, leave a voicemail for Diane in the office, however we wanna do it. We wanna hear from you is the, is the bottom line. We wanna hear from you. And I think that's enough for right now. <laughs> Other, oh, Jesse has an announcement, sorry. Good morning. We blessed packages, and you are all invited to take one and keep it in your car, so when you encounter a neighbor who might need one, you'll have one with you. Thank you much. And yes, since those are already blessed, you can take one out of that basket uh, at the back of the church right now. Anything else? Okay. 
Now we get to bless. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Tend the sick. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. <laughs>